One area I've become very interested in in the last five or so years is the area of state capacity and in particular the motivation of uh, civil servants and other delivery agents. So if you think about development, part of the challenge is the design of policy for development, but a big challenge is implementation of policy and civil servants have a big role in that. So in work with um, Marianne Bertrand in the business school in Guozhou at the University of California, Berkeley, we've been working uh, on the motivation of Indian administrative officers and finding that a number of factors which affect their career incentives are important in determining how effective they're perceived to be by a whole range of actors in these different states. I guess the second chunk is a, an area that I've been working on for a long time, which is how do you reach people at the very bottom of the employment ladder in developing countries? And in South Asia, whether that's India, Pakistan, or Bangladesh, those are landless laborers, day laborers. So I presented a paper in the Becker seminar, which is contrasting two views of why people stay poor. One view, it's all about your traits, you have unproductive traits, or you have uh, limited access to opportunities. So you're able to do other things, but you don't have the, the opportunity to do that. In the context of rural Bangladesh, that translates to either being a landless laborer or for women or working in livestock rearing. But to work in livestock rearing, which is principally cows, you need to uh, get hold of some capital to do so. And so we show that there is evidence for rural Bangladesh of a poverty trap where many people are able to do livestock rearing cannot do so because they cannot access that big chunk of capital needed to engage in that activity. And so it's wonderful to come and present that to a large audience here. The final thing, which is, I guess, uh, very related to the Becker Friedman Institute, is I've been working with a director, Michael Greenstone, for the last five or six years on the on the sort of big problem of access to energy, particularly to electricity in the developing world. And it turns out that much of the problem is not to do with generation of electricity, but to do with distribution of electricity. And there, the problem is that many people in the developing world, and we're working in a, a poor state in India called Bihar, do not pay for the electricity they use. They either are billed and don't pay, or they steal the electricity. And what that means is the distribution companies lose money, they're all public distribution companies. And hence you get two consequences. One is very limited access to electricity. And the second is that the electricity is very unreliable because if demand is much higher than supply, the only response is to shed load and create blackouts. And so we're working on a very large randomized control trial covering 28 million people where we try to incentivize uh, households to pay for their electricity in return for them getting more hours of electricity. And so we've been trying to push that project ahead whilst I've, I've been here. But I think it, it, it all boils down to this view that we both share that the fundamental problem with access to electricity in the developing world is it's treated as a right as opposed to a private good. So it's been wonderful to sort of not only push ahead a few papers in that direction, but also to talk more generally, to have the time to talk more generally about how to take that, that general agenda forward.